Hi, I'm Keith Whitelock and welcome to Watercolor Workshop. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a farm scene for a demo. It's going to be a plain field with a nice puddle of water in it and a few geese dropping in to feed on the leftover corn. It's a way of painting water by a way of not painting water. I think you'll see what I mean. All right, here's the sketch that I've prepared for the demo today. And it's a nice little field scene. And I didn't put a lot of detail in the uh, puddle itself or the little corn stalks that are going to appear here. But we will take note that most of these little rows of corn come back in the form of perspective and they're kind of drawing your eye to this corner. So just to keep composition in mind, when I put the clouds in, I want to make sure that the clouds generally sweep down in here. And the whole feature with the little flight of geese coming in will tend to direct your eye and sweep you off into this part of the painting. So I've transferred that to the watercolor paper and you can't see very much detail on here at this point and we'll begin with a nice wet into wet wash in the sky. I'll add a nice wet wash of water over the entire paper because this puddle that's going to appear in the middle of the field will reflect some sky color. Now for the sky washes I've mixed up a very wet rose color red, very light, and a nice light yellow and a bit of a mix of ultramarine blue with just a touch of phthalo blue. I don't want this to be too too dark but these are very thin um, very wet washes and we'll apply those into some clear water. So I'll begin with that little bit of rose color that I had and I'm just going to bring some of that near my horizon sweep up into the painting like this and let that go. Rinse the brush and then I'll take some of that really nice light yellow that I had and we'll kind of mix that all up into the upper portions of the sky and let those colors creep together. Now the next step will be to add the actual clouds. And in this case we're just going to bring some streaky little blue clouds in, in this direction. And we'll drop in some more up here. And maybe we'll even just kind of skip around a little and let that break up into some little cloud forms. And fill in the top. And I'll just take a tiny hint of that blue, drop it in here. And while it's nice and wet like this, I can add a few more little streaks. And I'm reasonably happy with how that's going to go. Now there's going to be a nice puddle down here in the bottom part of the field. So what I'm going to do is actually take some of this light blue and put that right here where that puddle is going to be, pre-stain part of that field. And a little later we'll come back and cover that over and define those rows of corn and it'll already be colored for us. Okay, I've let this paper dry down a little bit and the colors are very subtle. It's a little hard to see what's going on, so we'll just throw the sketch back over here as a refresher and you'll see where this puddle is going to be. These parts of the field are going to be nice and dark and we'll try and vary the color in here between sort of a nice golden reddish brown and a dark brown and then we'll add the tree line in the background. And I'll start with a mix of some burnt sienna and yellow ochre and I'll have to angle this a little and just so I can establish 
a little bit of a horizon line because this is very hard to see in here. I'll stipple across here with just the edge of that brush and that'll let me know where I want to paint down and I'll follow along very roughly the paths that these little corn rows of corn will take and that will just start to define that shape of the puddle that I want to put in here and this doesn't have to be exact because we're going to come back and put quite a few other little washes of color into this and darken it up, but I think this goes a long way in laying out the general shape of what we're doing. And as I've mentioned in other paintings, we're sort of painting something by not painting something. We don't actually paint the puddle as much as we paint everything around the puddle, and it'll just appear for us. Now while this is wet, it will blend together really well. And now will be a good time to start throwing in some other colors. If I want a little burnt sienna in this to warm that up or redden it just a little, we'll throw in a few streaks of that at this point. We'll just let the corner of this brush work for us the way a little pointed round brush would work. And we'll just gradually darken and darken these little passages. We'll soften them in here where this woods line begins. And there may be some leftover plant matter in the field, so we'll get a little blue to throw in here, which will mix with that and give us a little bit of a greenish tint. I've grabbed a, a good assortment of brushes that I can use for the background. One is the classic grass comb brush with the uh, missing bristles. We'll use that for some trees. And I'll use an old sable round and we can splay that brush out. That'll be good for trees. And then the round brushes are good. We can use those for little individual, little individual trees and then using them on the side stroke we can indicate little masses of trees in this fashion. So I'll be using this selection of brushes with some mixtures of brown and blue to get that background. Now since so many trees that are far off in the distance get a nice light blue look, I've mixed up a little ultramarine blue with a round and I will turn the painting upside down and I don't really know where some of these trees will show up, so I'm just going to throw in a little line of distant trees. And these trees will be closer and darker over here. 
and we'll just kind of let that dry down. And I'll take a little burnt sienna, a little burnt umber, and I'll kind of work in, just using the tip of the brush, some little tick marks along here to indicate some of the little shrubs and weeds and trees that were going to be in this tree line. And eventually we're going to put quite a few little little individual remnants of the corn in the field that will make that jump out at us. We can stick a couple of them in just for fun now. One of the great things about a natural subject like this, just a simple field or simple landscape, is that it is missing really complex perspective items like boats, uh, vehicles, structures, houses, buildings, things like that. And we can get away with doing a very quick gesture type work that's very effective and it, it happens very quickly. I'm going to take just a little red, a little burnt sienna and mash my brush out in this fashion. This is an older brush so it won't hurt it and this will give it a nice round tip that I can use for some of the trees in this tree line to just kind of jump in and get those little fine branches, wispy branches indicated for us. And as the brush starts to tighten up again, we'll just move down into the more dense parts of the underbrush. I'm going to move now to a nice three-quarter inch flat and get some of this raw sienna, raw umber mixture. And even though the field does tend to look dark, I want it to be a good bit darker than it really is at this point. I'll leave a little highlight back here in the distance. But as we move our way forward, I do want this field to be a good bit darker. The darker I make this field, the more this puddle will tend to emerge and jump out. This is a good painting technique in that we can't make the lighter part of this puddle any lighter than it is because we don't have any white paint. We can't really brighten it up. But what we can do is come in and make the surrounding area much darker and it will have the same effect for us. Now as this part of the painting starts to dry down, I'm going to work back into the background again. I think I'll touch that with just a little bit of a darker violet. We just want a hint of that to show through every now and then. Now for this background area, I'm going to take the grass comb with a mixture of some just grayish sort of palette scrapings in a way. These are nice little groupings of paint that they are really leftovers from other mixings and we'll just kind of darken in where we want the trees to be in the background. And if you don't have a grass comb, a nice little flat brush will work as well. Here's a quarter inch flat brush 
And again, we just kind of want to indicate where we have various little groupings of trees here in this hedgerow. And we'll just sort of daub them in here and there. If we think that that edge is a little too square, we can just flip the brush out and it will indicate little limbs. And as that dries down, we'll take some even darker little browns. A little brown mixed with blue works, a little sepia brown. Just stipple that in here to indicate some of the darker parts of the wood line. Sometimes I want the illusion of a little sunlight coming off of some of these trees, just the very top. So I'll mash out a brush and get a little bit of a red color and we'll just kind of indicate some little individual trees like this with the bristles splayed out and just a very light touch we'll just indicate the top of one little tree here and perhaps another here and remember we want to spread them out a little but don't create a regular pattern like you would find in an orchard. That just won't look natural enough for us. So, so instead we'll just randomize these. We'll throw in one here, one there, some close together, some farther apart. And drag that down towards the base. And I think that'll create the effect I want. Now I'll switch to one of my detail brushes and we'll get just a little burnt umber and get that to a nice sharp little point and we can use that for dabbling in the background on those background trees. We want to define just a few of the trees. Your eye will go to them, you'll think we painted the whole woods line. Of course, I like to flip it upside down and get back in with just that tip of the brush, dance it along the bottom. That way I can take advantage of the paper texture and just the natural flow of uh, paint, my arm, and just pop those little random details in without a whole lot of effort. I want to grab a little yellow ochre and just touch up some of these little areas in the background where the white paper is showing through. This will give us an illusion that perhaps a little, just perhaps a little sun is shining on the back part of the field. And I really don't want it to appear like a snow scene. I want to put just a few more little wispy branches in these trees. I'm not quite happy with how they look. So I'll use a brush that's got the bristles all splayed out on it, and that'll help me detail these trees. Okay, the overall scene is coming together about like I want it. 
and now it's time to just go ahead and jump in and finish up some little things with the field. Now I want a little more darkness yet. Now back here near this woods line where we would be getting sort of natural shadows coming across the field, we'll darken that. And we also want some of these little ridges in here to be a little darker. We'll just use that knife edge of a flat brush to kind of cut across. Do that work for us. I also want to darken up this foreground area. So I'll mix up some burnt sienna, some burnt umber. Some of this will have some sepia added. And we'll start putting in these little irregularities in the field down here in the foreground. Not so much real details as just little natural organic indications. And as I mentioned before, the darker they are, the more they're going to make this puddle seem lighter and much more reflective. We want these details to appear to recede and be smaller as they get back in the, into the tree line towards the distance. And we want to create some little spiky corn stalk remnants and a few little weeds in the field and then that'll finish it right up. And of course we don't have to paint every last one in. We'll just take a little detail brush and along these rows we'll put in a few little just random indicators and of course your eye will assume that there are many more here and that they're all very detailed. One of the fun things about watercolor is that if you have a good brush that comes to a decent point you can use a little bit bigger brush for a lot of these things then the casual observer would think that you are really using so it holds a lot of paint because the viscosity is very low and you can paint quite a few things in without having to reload the brush unlike oil paint it's very thick it's sticky you tend to run out of paint very quickly with that Kind of a fun little advantage with watercolor. And by splaying the brush out, we can actually just stipple in a few of the very distant rows. In this fashion, without really painting them all in. And if we think that the water is a little too light, we can rinse the brush and go back in and get just a, a little bit more of that nice light blue that we had in the sky. And we'll just draw a little bit of that across the puddle, being careful not to get it too wet because we don't want those little pieces of corn to smear, but it helps get just a little bit more 
sky color in the puddle. And when it dries, it'll be a bit, a good bit lighter, but I think it'll help the effect. Now I might pick it that a little bit more just before I sign off on it, but the next thing I want to do is put in my little flight of geese. Now I've got a very sharp, very fine detail brush. For each little goose, I'm going to paint just the indication of a body, and I'll just put in the little bodies first. As you can see, this brush points very good, like I said, and I'm just going to put some little light shapes that sort of indicate where the goose body is, and I'm just going to leave it open to the sky color, a little darker towards the back. We'll put all those in first, and then we'll come back with some much darker paint. And we'll just put in just the tiniest little indication of a neck and a head. Just a little tick mark. And perhaps a tail. Just give a little touch to each one. And then we'll put in some little indicators for wings. Now we try to vary the wings. We don't want the exact same wing on each bird, but we'll just have them kind of drifting into this field. I remember years ago when I got into the waterfowl painting, I'd have to paint almost every feather on the bird, but uh, when we're just doing something like this, we don't really need that. We need just the slightest little indication of the birds coming into the field. And maybe we'll actually put some tinier ones way off in the distance, and these will be very small. And in this case, it's more, I'll zoom in on those, it's more the position of the little figures and how we put them together than the detail that really sells us on the idea that these little birds are there. So, looking it over, I'm reasonably happy with it. Just to finish it off, I'm going to take a round brush with a little green in it. I want just a hint of a different color in the foreground. And that's shaping up like I want it, so I think I'll give it a signature and we'll give it just a few extra little pieces of uh, field litter, a few extra little ticks in here, maybe just a few extra tree limbs, and this painting will be good to go. Well, hope you enjoyed that demo. It's a very simple subject, but it's effective. Join me again here on Watercolor Workshop on Pack 14.
I'm Keith Whitelock.